the GPL or the GNU user space as we know it, the stuff that, you know, that we run you know, Xorg and an open office and even Firefox on, that platform is dying. So that's the straw man that I'm, I'm putting out. And I've been thinking a lot about this actually in the, in the last couple of months. So that's, that's the opening statement there. Who wants to bash it out first? I'll go. <laughs> You can go last. I don't sorry. even. No, I, no, I no. can go last. Yeah, you go okay, last. Okay, okay. Sure. Ricardo to left. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's an interesting statement. I mean, uh, as we were looking at, uh, even in the past few weeks, uh, with some of those changes, like um, having the, the, for example, for Chrome OS, like trying to move more things for the cloud and internet and all the things that I, you try to pre-compile the, the, for example, the, the JavaScript or something like that and push the, just the binary for the, for the clients and the thread that goes through the free software in general. And uh, also the, from the bad experience that I had with Google uh, with the, the Android 3.0, for example, that more and more, like while, while I see as, for example, the MAT uh, related, um, licenses as being uh, quite good for people building products because they don't actually need to care that much about the whole GPL violation and things like that. I mean, it's, and once we start switching uh, entirely for that kind of thing, I'm actually a little bit afraid of where it's going to get us. Uh, because <clears throat> we tend to do and work out open in something that uh, Linaro is only able to do that kind of thing because we know that, for example, the trunk of a project it's like is a part of the Git street, it's GPL, yeah. everybody can, 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 can communicate, can work on it and things like that. But once we, we have like a big company working on a, on a company that is not actually GPL and is, is mostly using for a product, for, for, for example, you don't actually know where the upstream is and who is actually leading that development. In. And even when you get the binary, you, you're, you're not sure what, what the binary is. Well, we binary. had that already, even for web. So. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but I mean. <laughs> even uh, at the source. But currently, still, I mean, we still have some big components, like, for example, the compiler, the C, or even a kernel, and a few other parts that um, are kind of GPL. So we're kind of not, there's still a lot of components out there that they're, where they're, there's kind of, uh, we're still working in the same way they were before, but. For example, even for ALSA, there's kind of a new thing now. I try, for example, to replace with tiny ALSA that is kind of the, 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 the license is, is different. And uh, uh, like, for example, we're going to basically replace PulseJot because of the license and a few other things. So yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting. For the things, and a lot of people are kind of moving it, not uh, because it is like, the, the, you can still say that it's free software, but it, it seems that the reason for most of the people to be moving in that direction is basically because it's, it's, it's easier to deal with it from the legal point of view, not actually because it, we actually strain the, 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 the free software relationship with the, the developers and such. So it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I, it's, while I'm a little bit scared about where, I'm gonna, where we are going to go in general, um, it's, it's a good thing also as well for, for a lot of other people and products being, being used and being on, on, on top of free software. So it's, I don't know, maybe. <clears throat> Rusty? Oh, no, 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 I, uh, <laughs> all right, let's. Well, I, I uh, was given the privilege of asking the last question in the Android Summit. Yeah. And the question I asked them was whether they self-hosted yet. In other words, do they develop Android on Android? And the answer came back, no. Although they feel they went on about how they could change this or that or the other little thing and maybe get there. And I think that, I think that it's pretty clear at this point that embedded platforms that have a GUI are moving pretty quickly to Android, all right? I mean, that might change next year or, or maybe there's some places I'm not aware of where, where it's not for whatever reason, but what I'm seeing is that in the embedded GUI space, Android is the answer, what's the question, seems to be the industry's attitude. Yeah. On the other hand, uh, as the Android developers themselves said, I mean, code development isn't happening on Android. I mean, I've seen some people, you know, do it as a lark, but, you know, touch screen on, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, my, my fingers are like keyboards, maybe it's because I'm old. The other big segment, another big segment is uh, servers. And those, use the GNU stack, there's a huge amount of software 
and system administrators and everything else, they're used to that. And uh, maybe that's, and, and it's not growing at the rate. I mean, I, I don't know if there's 250 million uh, GNU Linux servers out there. There might be. I mean, there's some really, really big data centers in East Oregon where I come from. I mean, really big ones. We're talking 28 megawatts of power consumption. And you can do the math, right? But I'm not, uh, but it, the growth rate might not be as high, but there's a lot of it there, and it's not going to disappear anytime soon. In addition, the headless embedded, things where there isn't a full GUI style display, maybe there's just a few LCDs, or maybe it's just seven segment display, or maybe it's just the lights. Those don't seem to be moving towards Android at the moment. Maybe they will, but they aren't now. So what I'm seeing is that uh, as a fraction of the market, GNU Linux is shrinking, in my opinion. On the other hand, as a fraction of the market, Windows is kind of dominant anyway in the places that it normally plays. However, in terms of the number of units out there and the, num and the amount of software, it's still growing quite well and is doing reasonably, reasonably healthily for now. Uh, never forget, uh, I've lived through both the two Unix and two Linux transitions, and it may well be we've got a two Android transition. I mean, the idea, it, it sounds silly that these little smartphones might knock off the servers, but it sure seemed silly in 1981 that the IBM PC was going to knock off the VAX, but it did. So, And pretty quickly, too. Uh, if you count pretty quickly, a decade or 15 years, sure. Which, if, from my perspective, is pretty, I think quickly, pretty quickly, but you guys are, you know, I've heard that nature. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think I've prattled on enough, but that's, that's kind of the way I see it. Yeah, what he said. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, so um, servers, pretty safe. Low, low, low end embedded. I mean, we always sucked at the desktop. I mean, to now go, hey, we're losing, because you know, because it wasn't our part of the desktop, maybe that was the problem. I'm never ever going to begrudge someone a decision not to use glibc. So, you know, I, it, it, it's hard to go, oh wow, you know, we're, we're kind of losing out to this whole Android thing. Um, so I think there's a certain amount of that to put things in perspective. In some markets, yeah, but we wouldn't be there otherwise, so whatever. The other thing is, I mean, the licensing issues, it always comes back to going, um, people sometimes take the, 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 the freedom to close that you get with BSD licenses, and they go, well, this is awesome. And then eventually they discover, actually, it isn't awesome. And they always come back, healthy projects always come back to a GPL-like environment, whether they have a GPL license or not. Because it having a healthy upstream and most contrib contributions flowing into it just works really well for collaboration. And even if the license doesn't force you to do it, that's where you will end up. So this whole, you know, being worried about the licenses, it's, it's, it's not so much a function of the license, it's a function of a healthy project. As long as the project is healthy, you'll get that, whether the license says you have to contribute back or not. So I'm not hugely concerned about the licensing issues. Well, it took a long time, though, for the, for the real Unixes to come back, though, right? From the US yeah, US so there's different level of clue as well, yeah. and there's you know, uh, you know, I work for a large company who've been through this whole GPL fear thing. You do become used to it. Yeah. You know, you kind of get over it. You understand it, um, and then you only panic when a new version of the license comes out. <laughs> so you know, uh, the, the natural progression of panic is is mostly like this. So I, I anticipate that will happen, um, and that license is a driver. Uh, will diminish within the next three years quite quickly. I think the GPL V3 didn't do us any favours on this one. Um, it's, as you said, it's produced this sort of panic response from a lot of the vendors. But they had a similar response, didn't they, when GPL V2 was the first there, so... And in a way, it's made GPL V2 more palatable in a way, right? Because people <laughs> say, actually, it's not V3, so V2 might be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but fundamentally, the V3 scares them because principally of the patent problems, yeah? Mm -hmm. So if the patent problems start to be mitigated by other... <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll let you go one more time. <laughs> but if the patent problems become less of an issue, then obviously the problems with the GPL v3 will become less of an issue. Well, there's TiVo isolation as well in the GPL, which I think is what affects actually most people that are doing 
devices, which is the sort of uncertain terms in, under which the GPLv3 contaminates other pieces that are put on the same storage media. So that's one thing which I think is, yeah. hasn't, it certainly hasn't done us any favors because people now think, wow, but if I put anything there. But I think, for, for example, how many of those devices, of those Android devices and tablets and et cetera, it gets to the market actually have the kernel available easily that it can go to the vendor's website and download it? Is it really happening? Or? For the, so when they come from a significant OEM, yeah. it does happen today. That's the, I think that's 100% of the big OEMs do it today. They, the, the compliance, I think, is good there. The smaller OEMs, but in that case there, the user base is also much smaller, so the amount of people that are affected are much smaller, and this has always been, a, we've always done a practical thing, you know, when we've thought about going after GPL violations. Does it make sense to go after everybody in the cottage industry that's putting out a device? Patents. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so, I'm not a lawyer. Put your hand up if you're a lawyer. Okay. So, coders discussing law, it's a bit like if you've ever seen a lawyer discussing code, so bear that in mind. But uh, the, the, some lawyers who I do respect and trust assure me that the patent language in v 3 is merely a clarification of what they read the V2 patent language to be, and that the, there is no radical ground shift. Now, I do realize that there are some of my kernel colleagues who Having read the patent clause in V3, thought it was terrible, but that is mainly because they had never read the V2 patent clause. <laughs> <clears throat> so I will put it, leave it at that. Uh, the TVOization thing, again, um, yes, the language in V2, you can convince yourself it, it actually allows you to place these restrictions on, um, because technically they may not be restrictions on distribution of source, et cetera. But um, I know a number of my current colleagues and myself feel that that's very, very thin. If you're trying to avoid me making use of the source through technical means, uh, you're per certainly playing fast and loose. And so it's very clear in V3 what that means. Um, and uh, not all of the kernel community feel that it's overreach. I think it's necessary. I mean, we're happy the GPL to override confidentiality agreements, employment agreements, all kinds of stuff it barrages through. It says you may not put further restrictions, full stop, of any kind. We're happy with that with V2. Um, I expect my license to be enforced, whether you're using Voodoo or whatever to get around it, right? It doesn't matter. So as somebody who had to actually break into my own Android phone, um, you're running my own code, which made me think for a moment, maybe I should put a hole in the module loader so I didn't have to do that again. <laughs> I have an increasing amount of sympathy for this idea of uh, doing it through uh, illegal means rather than necessarily putting backdoors in my own code. Uh, fortunately, my kernel colleagues put enough backdoors in that I didn't have to. <laughs> I have now rooted my phone. Thank you very much. All right. What do you think, Zach? <laughs> if, I, if I use that, it'll just be way too loud. Um, so, in America, <laughs> California. Set, set lead for this one. Even, even in the great state of California, I still have the right to keep and bear arms. I can still go and buy a gun. Now, why is that so important? <laughs> my, my flight's an A. Because <laughs> It's important because there are people like you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> because if I want to overthrow my own government, the first thing I'm going to want to probably do is grab a gun in some instances. Now. Well, it's a red kit these days, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I, consider the GNU, I consider GNU Linux just a particular organizational expression of a inbred need, an ingrained need, <laughs> to create code, to write code, to, to do what I want to do with a computer or any computational thing. 
It wasn't long ago when people were digging through dumpsters to create open source software. It wasn't long ago when people who didn't have a computer would sit down and write an algorithm out on a piece of paper and design what they wanted to design without any, any, any hope of even computing that. It wasn't long ago when the normal computer users would leave for the night and the real computer users would come in and use these timeshare devices that cost millions of dollars to run. So I don't think the world is any different than it ever was. I don't think GNU Linux is dead or dying or anything. I don't think Linux Android is is competing or or killing GNU Linux. It's all an expression of this hacker ethos that we all have. We are here because of that at some point. So I think that the need to want to create, the need to want to have freedom of expression, as long as we are able to buy guns, which is <laughs> as long as we're able to have some access to what we want to do, then it's just, a it's just a matter of degree of how easy it is to get that access. And I love my Android device, but I'm not going to hack on it. I will always want my Linux box to hack on. When I first sat down at Linux on Linux and I actually worked on it, I had that moment that I'm sure everyone else in this room has had, which is, oh, thank God. C colon backslash, blah, blah, blah. And don't even get me started on Apple. I mean, Apple is the antithesis, and yet I have kernel hackers who are sitting there with their Steve Jobs computer. Do I judge them? Hell no, I don't judge them. <laughs> because it's choice, because it's freedom. So what the hell do I care whether I'm running Ubuntu on a phone or whether I'm running Android on a desktop? It doesn't matter. What matters is that we can continue to create and what matters is that we can continue to create inefficient efficient manner. And that's, that's what matters.